Hi everyone. This video is a getting started guide for the Vulcan Haskell bindings running on macOS Catalina. I'll demonstrate how to get the examples running from a completely fresh install of Catalina and some of the basics of the Vulcan loader. This is a completely fresh install of Catalina, which I'm running from a USB drive for the purpose of this video. I'm also capturing HDMI output via an external recorder. I'm going to use the Homebrew package manager for the dependencies in this video because it's a simple setup. There are several alternatives to Homebrew which might be more desirable, depending on your preferences. I'll start by installing Homebrew itself. The Homebrew website has an installation script which can be downloaded by curl and piped directly into the shell. The usual caveats about security apply here. It's also possible to install the dependencies manually and to use Nix packages for some dependencies. Now that Homebrew is installed, we'll install package config, SDL, and stack, which are the dependencies we need for the Vulkan API examples. The Vulkan SDK isn't officially available for Homebrew yet, but a Homebrew cask is available, which I'll install now. I'm installing the cask using the No Quarantine option to bypass the gatekeeper security of macOS. If I didn't use that option, then we wouldn't be able to run binaries from the SDK without first clearing them with gatekeeper individually. This step, of course, means that you have implicitly agreed to the license for the Vulkan SDK. We can see that the Homebrew cask has installed files under the user local share Vulkan directory. This is one of the locations that the Vulkan loader looks for drivers. I'll talk about the loader a bit more later on. In this directory, we can also find an ICD, or installable client driver. For the macOS SDK, the ICD is Molten VK, and if we inspect the JSON file, we can see the location of the shared library. Next, I'll create a workspace directory. There are currently two major Vulkan bindings for Haskell. One binding by a Chirkin mirrors the behavior of the typical C API for Vulkan and requires a lot of manual memory management, even for simple tasks. The other binding by XPP plus one is a more typical Haskell API and is what I'm using today. I'm cloning the GitHub repository, making sure to check out all its submodules. Next, building the API and its examples is as simple as using the stack build command. Of course, if you would prefer not to use stack, this step can also be accomplished using the cabal system directly. Having built the API and examples, we can run some of them. The SDL triangle example is the hello world example for Vulkan. This example notoriously requires about a thousand lines of code, no matter what language you write it in. Another nice example from the Haskell bindings is the resize example. This draws the Julia fractal, responds to mouse movement, and allows resizing of the SDL window. Now I'll talk a bit about the Vulkan architecture, because it's a bit different from what might be familiar from OpenGL. There are several good YouTube videos describing the Vulkan loader, and I won't try to cover the same material as those. However, I can describe some of the parts of the loader in terms of what we now have installed for macOS. First, there's the Vulkan application. These are applications like the SDL triangle and resize examples that we've just seen they call into the Haskell Vulkan bindings. 
The Haskell bindings communicate with the loader to perform all the functions of the API, such as determining the available devices, setting up pipelines, and sending commands. The ICDs, or Installable Client Drivers, implement most of the device-level Vulkan functionality. So how does this architecture map to what we have installed? First, if we examine the shared library corresponding to the Vulkan bindings from Haskell, we can see that it requires libvulkan.1.dilib. libvulkan.1.dilib is the Vulkan loader. The Vulkan loader can be controlled by some environment variables that are described in its documentation. One of these controls logging, so that we can see what ICDs it can find. If we run the SDL triangle example with VK loader debug set to all, then we can see the search pass it checks for ICD manifest files. We can also see the ICDs that it eventually locates. For macOS, the Luna G SDK only comes packaged with Molten VK as an ICD. Molten VK is built on top of Apple's Metal Graphics framework and so enables hardware accelerated Vulkan. However, there is another software only ICD that can run on macOS called Swift Shader, which is maintained by Google. I'm going to check out and build Swift Shader in this step to show how an alternative ICD can be used. An ICD like Swift Shader might be useful for environments where Metal is not available, such as continuous integration or virtualized environments. After building Swift Shader, I'll look for where it stores its Vulkan ICD manifest. Next, I'll obtain the full path to that manifest file. We can override where the Vulkan loader looks for ICDs using the VK ICD file names environment variable. I'll set this environment variable to point to the Swift Shader ICD and then run the SDL triangle example again. Now we can see that the Vulkan loader has found the Swift Shader ICD and the example has selected the Swift Shader device. Similarly, if we run the example with VK loader debug set to all, we can see explicitly which ICD is being used. A final item worth mentioning is the difference between the version of the Vulkan loader and the version of an ICD. If we run the Vulkan info application from the Vulkan SDK, we can see that the instance version, which is the version of the loader, is 1.2. However, the version of the physical device, which comes from the ICD, is only 1.0. In this case, the physical device is a discrete GPU installed in my laptop. Hidden in the Vulkan specification is a section which describes how these versions should interoperate. It basically says that it's the responsibility of the application not to use any device level functionality above the version supported by a device. This is very important in a Haskell context because it's possible to compile code which will crash with a seg fault if it uses capabilities not present on a device. That's it for this video. Hopefully this will help people get started with the Haskell bindings on macOS.